Hey guys, this is Tom from Tom Build Stuff, and today I'm going to show you how I test and locate the coaxial cables in my structured media panel. I'll be using this Klein Coax Explorer 2 with Remote Kit. I'm running new data, voice, and video cables throughout my home and terminating them to a central structured media panel. It's important to know where each wire in the panel goes in case there's any problems in the future. For the coaxial video cables, I'm using Klein's Coax Explorer 2 with Remote Kit, model number VDV512-101, to test and identify the coax cables. This was one of the tools I received free for review through Home Depot. It comes with a testing tool, and then on the back you have four colored remotes, as well as a coupler that You'll understand why it's important when we actually start using it. The tester runs on two AAA batteries that you access by unscrewing this cap right here. It's fairly simple to use and it costs less than 40 bucks so it's very affordable even if you're just doing a small residential installation. It does two important things. First you can test your cables to make sure they're properly terminated and that they're not cut. This works for small patch cables you have access to, as well as your structured media that's running behind your walls out of view, as LEDs that indicate if there's a short or an open fault in the cable, which is easy to read. It also has these colored remotes you use to locate your cables. This is a good tool to use to label your cables or patch panels, so you can identify where each cable goes from your structured media panel. In a little bit, I'll move over to my structured media panel and show you how that works, but right now I'll do a quick test of the patch cable. This is an RG6 quad shield patch cable I made. I'll take one side, I'll screw it into this F connector on the top of the Coax Explorer 2. Then on the other end, oh, I can't just put in a, a remote. I need to use the coupler as well. So I have the coupler and the remote and I'll just screw that onto the other end of the cable. Okay, then we'll go back to the tool, and there's this test button right here, and if I press it, we'll see that one of the green LEDs lights up, and there's four green LEDs, a red one, a blue one, a green one, and a black one, and the black one lit up because we're using the black remote. If I change that remote to the green one, and then test that again, the green LED with the green bar on the label will light up. We'll try one more time. Put the red remote on there. And now it's the green LED with the red bar that lights up. And I'll show you why that's important in a little bit. I'm gonna move over to my structured media panel right now and test out the other feature. Here on my structured media panel, I have a 1U keystone panel that I filled with coax ports to use as my coax patch panel. This is where I terminate all my coax cables that I run to various ports throughout the house. Then I connect them to one of two splitters I have. I uh, have this one here for connected to Fios TV and then I have another powered splitter amplifier that distributes my over the air TV antenna. For demonstration purposes, I connected some coax cables between the patch panel and this wall plate that has four coax keystones in it. In real life, this wall plate would be far away from the panel in another room. Actually, each keystone, each port, would be in a different room. So let's say this one is in the master bedroom, this one's in the guest bedroom, this one's in the living room, and this one's in the home office. And I have them connected to ports six through nine on my patch panel. I want to label my patch panel so I can identify where the cable connected to each port leads, but when I was running my cables, maybe I didn't mark them, or my markings got rubbed off, or cut off, or I just forgot. Actually, this is how most professional installers do it. They'll run cables, and then they'll test and locate and mark each cable on the patch panel when they're done. So I'm going to place these remotes from the test tool onto the keystones, and in the master bedroom, we'll put the red one. And when I'm doing this, I would be marking them on a notebook. I'll put the green one in the guest bedroom. The blue one will go in the living room and then the black one in the home office. Again, pretend these are in different rooms. Now the next thing, I come down to the patch panel here in the basement with the 
Coex Explorer tool, and then I'll go through and test the ports where I have cables connected to. And that just means I have to screw on this patch cable that's connected between the tool and the port. And then I could press the test button on the test tool. Let's see, I'm not sure if you can see that. I press it, and one of the green LEDs lights up, and uh, it's the one that's marked by the red bar. So that means this is where the red remote is. And if we look at our notes, red remote, that's, for, that's the master bedroom. So we could mark the patch panel master bedroom here. Take off the patch cord. And I wish I had those uh, F connectors that are just slip on. It would, would have made this much easier. I'll go to the next port in my patch panel. Screw this on. Go back to the tool, the Coax Explorer 2, and press the test button and see what happens. Okay, so this one lit up blue. Uh, well, the green lit up the one that has the blue bar. So I know this is the living room. So I would write down on my patch panel, living room. Okay, then we go to the next port. Okay, press the test button, and now we see the green LED doesn't line up. One of the one of the faults lights up, and it says open. And I'll get to that in a minute. But that that could be a number of different problems. But we'll keep going and hopefully try to locate the last port. Okay, so I have that connected. I'll press the test button. Okay, and we, we get another fault here. And this time, it says short. One common way for there to be a short in the cable is when the braiding isn't cut properly when terminating the cable. It can be left long and wrap around the main center conductor. That will short the cable. You can usually fix that by terminating the cable again. So we'll check out the connectors on each end and see if we can see a short and cut off the old connector and terminate the cable properly. I don't know if you recognize the problem here yet, but the color LED didn't light up for either of the shorts on the Coax Explorer 2. So we don't know which is the other end up here. We know we didn't locate green and black, but that's about it. So this one could be green, this one could be black, or this one could be black, that one could be green. We don't know. We can go open up this, you know, remove the cable from the back of this keystone, check it out, see if it's shorted, re-terminate it, check again, and then hopefully that fixes it. But if not, then we're kind of stuck. Uh, what we need to do in that case is we know this port here, port number six, has a short. So we'll go up and we'll grab one of the remotes, and we'll put that on this port downstairs in the basement. Now we know we haven't located green and black, so we'll remove the remotes from those. And then we'll go up to the ports, uh, one at a time, connect the test tool to the port, Press the test button. Okay, and we got lucky this time. The first one we connected to says short. So we know um, this is the guest bedroom. That's where the connection is shorted. So we'll take out the wall plate here. We'll check the connection, terminate it, and that should hopefully fix the problem. It's usually a bad termination. I guess it can sometimes be a bad uh, keystone port but that's pretty rare. So let's put everything back where it was. So we've, uh, this was black, this was green, and this was red. So we know this was in the guest bedroom, so we could put guest bedroom here, and we've identified our port. And if this was it, this was our whole setup, then we would know this was 
uh, port seven was our open port. I'm sorry. Yeah, port seven was our open port, uh, had the open fault. So we would know it would be uh, to the office where we had the open fault. And an open fault can be caused by a number of things. It can be uh, a bad termination. Usually it's the center conductor. Uh, it doesn't get inserted in the hole properly when you put it in the keystone jack or in the back of the keystone jack and that pin, that center wire breaks off. That's the most common way. Or it could be something more serious. Uh, if it is just a pin, all you have to do is cut the, the, the cable and then re-terminate it and you're good to go. But if that doesn't fix it, then it, it could be that there's a cut in the cable. And that could be uh, after you ran the cable, whether you were pulling it, maybe it got damaged while you were pulling it. Or maybe even after you installed the cable, it's working fine, but then somebody went in and you know cut out a section of a wall for whatever reason, was maybe repairing drywall. Or they put in some screws and the screw went right through the cable and it, short, and it, um, it, it cut your cable. So... Uh, that would mean you have to pull a whole new cable. But that's not the only condition where we would have an open fault. So this is a simple situation where we have four ports, four cables, and four remotes. Um, so we know that where the problem is because we only have four cables to check. But let me put the tester into this port number 10, which we haven't been using. Now, there's no remote connected to the other end of this. In fact, there's no cable connected to the end, other end of this. And when I press the test button, it shows a fault, an open fault. So when you put the tester on a port and it says open, it could mean that there's a problem with the cable, or it could mean that it happens to be one of the ports that you haven't put a remote on because likely you have more than four ports, but you only have four testers uh, to deal with, four remotes to deal with. So the way to, to, to handle this is just take good notes. Uh, keep a notepad, write down all your ports, one through uh, however many number of ports you have, one through 12, whatever. And then as you identify each port, you write down what, where, it leads to uh, what wall jack, and also keep a track of keep a track of all your wall jacks, all your ports in your wall jacks, and then cross them out as you locate them on your patch panel, and then whatever's left off that would be an open connection or an open cable that would need to be repaired or replaced. So if you thought this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I'm planning on making more videos on my structured wiring projects, so please click subscribe so you can get a notification whenever something new comes out. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I haven't been making a lot of videos yet, but you can find a lot of great articles on my site that cover building cabinets and drawer boxes, closet organizers and other furniture and DIY projects, some home improvement tips, tool reviews, and information on structured media wiring, so please check out tombuildstuff.blogspot.com linked in the description below.